two very different takes on the thriller comedy. We're going to talk about Fat Man and Freaky right now. Hey everybody, Dan here with Dan Reviews It. We've got two movies to talk about today. Now, uh, I haven't announced this on my channel yet, but in order to try and catch up with some of the movies I missed over the last few months, I've decided to try and watch one brand new 2020 movie every day in December and hopefully bring you reviews for all of them. So I've already seen actually five of them thus far, um, and some of them will have their own reviews. Some of them I will lump together like I do uh, sometimes with my, you know, three or four movies at a time weekly reviews. But, uh, you know, I'm trying to be logical about what gets put together, and I thought Fat Man and Freaky kind of made sense to uh, to be together. First of all, Freaky um, was in theaters for a few weeks but just debuted on demand this weekend. Uh, Fat Man debuted, I guess, last weekend, Thanksgiving. So both are relatively new to uh, the on-demand world. Um, and before we get into it, please do subscribe below. If you like my movie reviews, go ahead and click that like button below as well. That helps out the channel. And uh, subscribe too. I just hit 650 on the subscribers, so that is awesome. Would love to get to uh, 700 or maybe even higher before the end of the year. Who knows? Um, so please subscribe if you haven't yet. But let's get to these movies. So I decided to, uh, to do both of these together because they are both sort of in the same realm of like thriller slash horror slash comedy um slash fantasy i mean they, they they have a lot in common um and the results have been uh pretty mixed on uh the rotten so freaky uh is the the higher of the two it's liked about the same by critics and audience it's got an 83 percent on the critics 81 percent on the audience um, and Fat Man, not quite as much, 47 for critics. So really about, you know, half of them not liking it, half of them liking it, at least an average amount. And then an 83% on the audience. So the audience is almost the same for both of these movies, but the, the critics are very split. So um, let's talk about it and try and figure out why. I guess we'll go one at a time here. Um, and we'll talk about Fat Man first. So this is, um, you know, Mel Gibson's, one of his other attempts at, uh, you know, some some critical uh, and commercial success. I imagine they, they uh, envisioned this to go into theaters, but that did not happen. Last time we really saw Mel, as far as I know, was, was Daddy's Home 2 a couple of years ago, which was fine. It was, a, you know, good Christmas comedy here. Another Christmas sort of comedy, but uh, I would say more of an action thriller than anything, but they certainly try for the comedy here. So um, essentially he plays Chris Kringle, Santa Claus himself, but he is a real world Santa Claus. Um, and basically he's trying to save his declining Santa business. So um, he teams up with the U.S. military in a partnership and uh, at the same time as he's, you know, ensconced in that, well... Uh, he gives a lump of coal to this 12-year-old spoiled rich kid um, who is played by uh, Chance Hertzfield, who um, I recognize from the movie Good Boys, but not much else. He's done a couple of other things, I guess. But um, basically, he gets a lump of coal and says, no, no, this is, this is not right. I'm not going to let this happen. So he hires a hitman played by uh, Walton Goggins and hires him to basically kill Chris Kringle, aka Santa Claus. Um, so that's that's where we're at with this movie. And um, so, as you could tell from the synopsis, it's uh, got its hand in a few different things because certainly the concept is slightly humorous, I, I guess you could say. And certainly, you could imagine maybe there would be some some action sequences here, maybe some thriller type of violence. Um, and we do get all that. But it's this weird, like, patchwork movie where basically almost nothing works. 
Um, first of all, you know, look, Mel Gibson, I am a little hit or miss on. I was never a huge Mel Gibson fan to begin with because I didn't grow up on the Lethal Weapon movies. They were, you know, kind of too violent for me to watch. Um, you know, I never watched Braveheart. I certainly never watched Passion of the Christ. All of these are very violent movies, but then I also never watched a lot of his comedies. Like, Bird on a Wire was pretty big when I was in middle school. Never saw that. So I, I've seen really very little of Mel Gibson's filmography. What Women Want maybe was the first Gibson movie I ever even saw. Um, so when all the controversy happened, I was like, okay, I get it. He's, you know, a, a big star. But to me, he just wasn't. He was somebody they made fun of on Tiny Toons sometimes, you know. Um, but I loved uh, Hacksaw Ridge, which he directed. I thought that was great. Ironically, co-starring Vince Vaughn, which we'll talk about coming up next in Freaky. But, um, you know, I don't have this attachment to Mel Gibson that a lot of people do or did, um, that they sort of fell out of favor with him. But every time I see him either on screen or in interviews or at the Oscars in the last like five or six years, he just seems creepy. Um, and so does that work in his favor here? I would say no, because Chris Kringle is supposed to be the good guy of the, the movie. You know, the the crazed guy is supposed to be Walton Goggins, um, who, by the way, is great here. He is really the only thing keeping this movie afloat, if it is at all, and I'm not sure that it is. Um, and we have, you know, a couple of other, like, mildly good performances in this. Uh, Maureen Jean Baptiste plays Chris's uh, wife, Ruth. Um, and we have a couple other people here I, I don't really recognize, and, and that's all fine. Um, you know, people in the workshop and people that um, the, the hitman works with or, or, you know, associates with at least. So we see, you know, a few other people here, but none of them really matter. Maybe uh, the kid's grandmother, Deborah Grover, she's, uh, she's probably the other really good performance in this film, her and Walton Goggins, but... Um, Mel Gibson just has this, you know, kind of crazed look about him, which I don't think fit the character. Um, but aside from that, you could tell they were really going for this, like, dark comedy, this rich, you know, black comedy. And it just doesn't land that way at all. There's a couple of okay fight sequences um, between Goggins and Gibson. There's, you know, th thematically the idea of like, you know, Chris Kringle is having some money issues, so he looks to the U.S. government to like bail him out, essentially. Like, that is all sort of interesting stuff on the surface, but um, when it's combined together, it just falls on its face. Um, this movie does not know what it wants to be, or, or, or it does know what it wants to be, and it just can't get there. It, it. It just underwhelms at every turn. So I'm not sure. I, I get the sense maybe it did know what it wanted to be and thought that it was doing it well, and it just isn't. Um, but I, I don't know. That's certainly by far the, the biggest two problems with it is that Gibson is not, I don't think, the right person to play this character. Like, he just, he just has a crazed look in his face, and to me this is... You know, the Chris Kringle character, even in this world, in this movie, is, I think, supposed to be more, um, you know, sympathetic, the good guy, what have you. He's just trying to get by. He's trying to save his business. He's trying to live his life. Um, and none of it's working out for him. So I don't think the casting was right there. I think, you know, look, to get people to look in on it, sure, you put Mel Gibson in the role. Oh, what's, what's this going to be about? But... It just was not enough at all to carry it for me. Now, the kid is okay. Spoiled rich kid. I mean, he's, you know, a little jerk off. That's sort of standard. You know, I didn't pick up on anything special that he was doing, but the character was okay. But uh, Walton Goggins, look, I didn't really know about him until, I don't know, maybe 2013 or 14. Whenever he did that movie with Jesse Eisenberg and Kristen Stewart, it was called American something. I might have to look it up because I forget, but it was like – they were like drug runners or something. Um, it wasn't It wasn't that good to be honest, but he was a standout in it. American Ultra, it was called, 2015. Um, but then 
Like, it turned out I had seen him in things before, but just didn't know who he was. Because I've seen Lincoln, I've seen Django, um, Cowboys and Aliens. So, you know, he's been in different things. And then right after American Ultra, he was in Hateful Eight with Tarantino. And I was like, okay, wait a second. I like this dude. And then everything I've seen him in since, you know, recently he was in Words on Bathroom Walls, which I rated very highly. He was in uh, the new Tomb Raider reboot. And, of course, The Unicorn is his uh, TV show now on CBS, which... I really love it. It's one of my favorite shows on right now. So, um, you know, to me, he can, you know, almost do no wrong. It's like almost opposite Mel Gibson. Not that I care either way really about Mel Gibson, just I don't think he was right for the role. But Goggins is, is great here, and if you watch this movie, he is the reason. However, I definitely agree with the critics uh, on this one more so than the audience. I think their, their 47% is... Probably right on the money, maybe even a little bit high, to be completely honest. I think this movie had some good ideas and then just didn't know how to utilize any of them at all. Um, and I think Mel Gibson is very miscast in this film. Um, the humor did not land for me at all. I didn't laugh once in this movie. And I could tell that they were trying in, in different scenes. That didn't work for me. Um, so I I'm going to leave Fat Man with a D plus. I actually think the 47% is generous. Um, but this does seem kind of like a love it or hate it type movie. Like I could see people really enjoying it, I guess. But um, I certainly was not one of them. So let's move on now. Talk about Freaky. Um, and so this one, you know, critics and audiences agree is real good. Um, is it real good? Let's let's figure it out. Um, so the, the basic plot is um, it's I mean, the, the general synopsis is it's a uh, Freaky Friday take, you know, where they they switch bodies. But it's a slasher film. So the original title actually was Freaky Friday the 13th. And I think that sums this movie up perfectly. But to add a little bit more uh, specifics to it. And again, you know, I'm not going to give spoilers, but at least a little more plot than just that. So basically, uh, at the beginning of the movie, we find out 14, well, we see four teenagers brutally murdered. Um, and they are, I mean, it's it's brutal. I was not expecting the severity of violence in this movie. It is a Blumhouse movie, so we can expect sometimes some very jarring imagery, and we get that here. Um, but basically, the uh, the Blissfield Butcher is played by Vince Vaughn. He kills these four kids at the beginning. And I didn't look it up, but I think the blonde kid in the beginning is the, the dude that plays uh, Zach's son on the new Saved by the Bell reboot. I'll have to look that up. But um, but I, I, he was only in the one scene, so it's not like he was in the, the, you know, the main credits. But um, anyway, so uh, he steals this dagger at the the killing uh the dagger's called la dola and that basically when used at the right time uh switches bodies with the person using it so Catherine newton plays millie kessler who is a you know um high school student she's you know kind of made fun of by people um i think she's a cheerleader because she's she does a cheer in one of the scenes i'm not positive but um but anyway uh, they switch bodies when he tries to kill her, and so now, uh, you know, the two of them are running around town and trying to figure out, you know, well, she is trying to figure out how to get back, you know, into her body, and he, in her body, is trying to figure out how to use that to advantage, to his advantage, to kill other people, and it, it goes on from there. So, um, this movie is hilarious. Um, so, first of all, I didn't know this when I watched it but just doing a little bit of research so it was directed by this dude christopher landon so i knew it was a blumhouse production we see the the, the blumhouse uh, logo right at the beginning you know their little spinning chair thing um but the director christopher landon okay so this dude who I, I don't know by name i didn't really know his name but he directed both happy death days which i thought were both great i gave them like b pluses or b's you know, fantastic. He actually uh, also wrote uh, Happy Death Day to you. He wrote the sequel. Um, but he directed both. And he also directed, so those are like more on the comedy horror side like this, but he also directed a bunch of the Paranormal Activity movies, including, or no, he didn't direct them. I'm sorry. He wrote them, um, including number three, which Paranormal Activity 3 is one of 
my scariest movies I've ever seen in the theater. I was terrified by that movie. Um, so he also uh, wrote wrote the movie Dis uh, Disturbia with Shia LaBeouf. So this dude uh, knows how to get some scares from people, but he also apparently knows how to get some laughs from people. And so this movie, whereas, you know, Fat Man had a bunch of different moving parts and none of them really worked, this has a bunch of moving parts and all of them work. Now, I will say, if you don't like Vince Vaughn, maybe you won't like this movie because he is, uh, even though he's portraying a high school girl for most of the movie, he is still a bit Vince Vaughn-y, um, which personally I like. Uh, I admit that it can get a little tiresome, but the thing is we haven't seen him really in a while. The first time I saw him um, in a couple of years was The Binge, which I reviewed a couple of, I don't know, weeks ago, maybe a month ago. That was uh, on Hulu, maybe even before that. I might have done it before Halloween. Um, and that was like a horror movie comedy takeoff on The Purge. Um, didn't like it. I think I gave it a D plus or maybe a C minus. Didn't think it was that good. But I really liked seeing Vince Vaughn back doing his shtick. I've always found that to be funny way back when, you know, the dodgeball days, a lot of his earlier hit movies. Um, and I'm also one of the few people I think that, that really loves that movie, The Breakup with him and Jennifer Aniston. Um, so look, he's being Vince Vaughn here as a teenage girl. And you might say, all right, well, we did kind of just see Jack Black do that recently with Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle. And that is true. However, that was definitely more of an ensemble. And I think... With the Jumanji movies, the focus is certainly much more on Kevin Hart and Dwayne Johnson and them playing off of each other and doing what they're doing and, you know, just Jumanji as a concept and all the visual games and stuff within. This is basically Vince Vaughn and Catherine Newton's chance to shine, and both of them do. I'm, I'm heaping a lot of praise on Vince Vaughn. Catherine Newton is great as well playing Vince Vaughn, the, the killer. Um, you know, and I, you know, I've seen Catherine Newton in a few different things, um, but she has a wide range. Like she was in Blockers, which she was very funny in that, but she's also in Three Billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri, which is obviously, you know, a lot more dramatic. Um, and then she did Pokemon Detective Pikachu, which is more action based. So, and and then Ben is back with the Julie Roberts, where she's dramatic. So it's like she really can run the gamut. She is. I think quickly going to become a, a Hollywood darling. I think she's on that path of like, I don't want to quite put her up on the pedestal of Amy Adams or Emily Blunt, but maybe in 10 years, let's see. Let's see where she's at because she can clearly do a lot of different types of films. And here she's, she's really doing the comedy great. Um, but this movie doesn't work unless it's also – a good horror movie. And look, Scream obviously sort of set the template for all of that 50, no, 20, boy, what, 23 years ago now, 24 years ago? Um, so obviously there's a, a template that's been placed. Scream is the cream of the crop. I don't think any satirical horror movie will probably do better than that because it just set the stage for everything. It's an A-plus film. Um, you know, it, it just does it all. But we've seen several now in the last couple of years. The Happy Death Day series is one of them, but Ready or Not is another one with uh, Samara Weaving that is is another great horror comedy that, that really kind of fires on all cylinders. Here, look, the Freaky Friday thing, the, the body swapping thing has been done to death. It's been done so much. But when you think about it, in Happy Death Day, they do the whole um, you know time loop thing, so like a Groundhog Day or Edge of Tomorrow. So that's kind of been done to death too, no pun intended with with this. With this, but it still worked because of how well they did it. And here, it's the same thing. Like this movie is really funny, really legitimately frightening in parts. Um, I think certainly more towards the beginning before they get to the body swap, but then you know. I looked away a few times as well towards the end, um, sort of with the big showdown, and I won't, you know, say what happens, but it is a horror movie, so some things are, are bound to uh, to happen, and 
like most horror movies, they do also leave the door open for a sequel, which I would really honestly be interested in seeing. Um, the supporting cast here is is great too, though, which I, I didn't even really talk about, but uh, Celeste O'Connor and uh, Misha Ozhervich, maybe, is um, are Millie's two friends, Nyla and Josh, respectively. And um, what's really great about these characters is, yes, they're a little bit... Um, you know, Benetton, United Colors, you know, like, she's black, he's gay, you know, whatever, we got it. Um, you know, everybody's got to have a role. But they never, except for the one time when they actually point out, you know, you're black and I'm gay, we don't stand a chance, which was a very funny line. Um, other than that, like, it, it, it's not, you know, for that sake you know two gay guys actually wrote the script of this film so it's not being shoved in our faces that they're diverse it just these are the people um and and they're they're good friends and vince Vaughn trying to convince them that he is uh the Catherine newton character is hilarious um th this movie really is great now i'm not gonna give it you know one of my highest grades and the reason is because of what it is because it's a horror satire, a slasher satire, it has to sort of run through all the motions of what those movies are. So it hits pretty much every familiar beat you can imagine. Um, you know, it just does it in, you know, as a comedy as opposed to a usual Blumhouse, you know, horror movie. But there's even some sentimental moments here um, because the, the Newton character, Millie, lost her dad about a year ago. And so, you know, at one point, her in Vince Vaughn's body, you know, gets some um, some advice or whatever from her mom. Not really advice, but kind of has a heart-to-heart -heart with the mom, not the mom not realizing it's actually her. Um, and so she got to hear some some thoughts about you know how, what her mom's been going through with the dad's death. Like that was something I did not expect. Um, so listen, overall, this is I think one of the more enjoyable movies of the year, if you can handle it. You know, it comes with a couple of caveats. Yes, it is very very uh, violent, horror. -y. Um, you know, it's not like war violence. It's horror violence. There's you know stuff getting shoved through necks and and that sort of thing if you can handle that okay and if you can handle vince vaughn doing a vince vaughn bit but as a teenage girl um you know i i think you will uh, hopefully enjoy this movie as much as i did this was way better than fat man if you couldn't tell um and i really teetered on like a uh I, I was thinking maybe b plus you know that's kind of what i gave the happy death day movies that's what i gave ready or not um but I don't know. Maybe it was just my mood. But first of all, I, I thought this was funnier than those movies. Um, and I think they really nail the satire well here. Um, and look, I like a good body switch movie. There's only a few that I've seen that I was like, that was really terrible. The change up comes to mind with uh, Jason Bateman. It was, I think Ryan Reynolds was the other one in that, which I love both of those guys. How did that fail? Uh, I think I gave that like a C or a C white. It's like not good. Um, but this, I, I'm going to leave with an A minus for Freaky. I, I really enjoyed it. Um, certainly on, on the comedy. I think we've gotten a few good comedies this year. The Lovebirds, Borat 2, um, and now Freaky. And they're all sort of different styles of comedy. Like Lovebirds is more of a straight ahead, you know, romantic comedy sort of, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know if I'd even call it that, but, um, action comedy maybe. Um, and then Borat of course is more... I, I guess you could call it satirical, um, but it's more like, uh, you know, sort of unscripted bits kind of thing. Um, and then this is just a, a horror comedy or a satire. Um, so they're all sort of under different umbrellas. But I've given all of those movies like in the B plus, A minus range. So uh, uh, I'm glad to see some good comedies this year because for years, um, you know, 2018 and 2019 did not give us many good comedies uh game night with J jason bateman again i think he's the only one i even gave in the a range i think i gave that an a minus um but yeah I i'm glad to see some some real good comedies back so that's it fat man and freaky one i can recommend the other i uh, recommend you stay away from um but coming up so let's see i've already seen tenant which i think is going to get its own review um 
probably when it's about to come out on video. I just saw it the other day because I wanted to catch it before DVD. But um, I, while I was at the theater, I did a triple feature. So I saw The War with Grandpa. I saw Honest Thief. Both of those are coming out on DVD in a couple of weeks as well. So I may lump those two together along with some other recent theatrical releases. I still want to do a, uh, a Netflix Christmas movie roundup. I know there's a few of those out there, uh, Jingle Jangle among them. And then um, – I, there's just a bunch of other movies on streaming streaming services I really want to get to. Hillbilly Elegy, um, Uncle Frank on Amazon. Uh, there's one on Hulu, I think. Is it called Run? Um, that's getting some buzz. So I want, I want to tackle all of that. Like I said, I'm going to try and hit a new movie every single day in December uh, to, to catch up on my, my movie viewing. Um, but that's it. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you back here next time.